Hey everyone, this clip you're about to watch is from my new video on bug bounty hunting for client side injections, part two of the series, and by far my most requested video. I've got about two hours done so far and the full video is probably gonna be at least six hours. So hopefully these clips will get you started while you're waiting on me to finish the rest. I hope it helps, cheers. Okay, so that is all of the compensating controls that I wanted to talk through. Um, Again, I just want to highlight weaponizing is it's it's so important to to be able to articulate how you can weaponize this, right? We've talked through a lot of this here, so I don't know if I need to reiterate too much, but right, um, how are you going to have a negative impact on their users? That you have to be able to understand that you have to be able to very clearly and simply articulate it, identify who your victim is, and then tell them how you're going to weaponize it how you're gonna show impact. So I wanna talk about a few different ways, um, maybe in a little bit more detail that we can do that. Um, I've mentioned each one of these in some capacity throughout uh, the presentation so far, but uh, we're gonna do a deep dive into each one of them. So session hijacking, right? That is you steal the user session token and you're gonna leverage that session token or whatever, right? But however they are uh, performing authentication and authorization, however the application is, you're able to steal that token and impersonate them in order to get access, unauthenticated access to their environment um, and do something malicious. HTTP only flag, cookie flags, and content security policy are going to have a huge, 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 huge impact on your ability to do this. Cross-site request forgery doesn't really have any impact on this because that's not what you're trying to do. You're not trying to execute an action. You're just trying to get these sensitive values outside of the application somehow so that you can grab it and leverage it. Again, the um, you know how long a cookie lasts also has a huge impact there too. Um, session writing, I've said it over and over again. Cross-site uh, request forgery plus cross-site scripting. So let's say you can't steal that cookie. Now I wanna try and get the victim to perform an action that they didn't wanna perform. And that's, ideally I can load in an external script that has multiple different things it's gonna do. And so I'll go change their password and go do this and that, and, you know, and, and at the end of it, ideally you can leverage that to, you know, either you've stolen from, something from them or you can get unauthorized access to their environment. Um, and then if that doesn't work, data exfiltration. If we can't grab the session token and exfiltrate the session token, well, you know, do they have an API key that we could grab? Or, do, I mean, anything, right? Is it, do they have sensitive documents that are back there? Do they have a, a greater level of privilege than we do? Is it role-based access control with different layers where they're like a super user or even an admin? Can we load in an external script that actually makes a ton of Git requests to all these different things and actually enumerates these pages that we don't even know exists, maybe grabs the DOM and sends it back. And we have our own server over there. And if the content security policy is set up that doesn't prevent this, we can just keep pinging it all back you know, to our server. And we've got a whole database full of like, here's the endpoint, here's the DOM, et cetera. I mean, we can probably steal a lot of different information from it. Um, so yeah, if, if you know, that's typically the hierarchy of, of uh, weaponizing uh, attacks that I try, right? Let me get session hijacking first. Can I just steal their session token? Because that's the easiest way to show impact. If not, can I use session writing to force them to do something that they don't want to do? Or otherwise, can I just steal some data from them? So we can dig into each one of these a little bit more. I've included a lot of information on the slides here, and I'm not going to talk through all of it. This is something, you know, for all these, really, you can pause them and, and kind of go through. But, you know, just some examples, right? Uh, steal the session token through document.cookie. If there's a JSON web token or an API key that's maybe stored in local storage or session storage, something like that, you could grab that and send it out. If they're using OAuth, right? Can we get control of an OAuth access token or a refresh token? And can we exfiltrate that? and send it off. Maybe the, the session token, maybe they have some type of an exchange, right? So they there's a refresh token and an access token, but then there's an exchange on the back end that, that sets up the session token and we can steal that access token and do our own exchange and get a valid session token, right? Even CSERF tokens, right? Do they have CSERF tokens in there to where we can potentially steal it? And then from there, we can execute a session writing attack. But we have to get that CSERF token first and maybe it's hard coded or specific to the user. Um, something like that. Yeah. Um, again, there, I mean, there's tons of different ways that you can do this. You can see in the picture too, right? The different types of, you know, I mean, it, it, 
depending on what the content security policy is, you could use an Ajax call. You could, uh, you know, write to the DOM and, and have it create a new image tag. And that image tag is going to send. There's so many different ways that you can do this. But fundamentally, you're going to access some type of sensitive data that, that is related to their session. And then we are going to use an HTTP request, send it to something that we control so that we can, we can access that and use it. Uh, again, session writing. I'll just go through a few more examples here. Yeah, changing their email, changing their username, changing their password. Although obviously like the username is not going to have as big of an impact if you don't know their password. But yeah, can you change the way that they log in so that you can successfully log in um, without their knowledge, right? This will just happen when the page loads up. Um, is there some type of SSH key, API key that, that we can, you know, grab and leverage to give them, to, you know, if there's, again, if it's stored in certain places that JavaScript can access, if it's stored in the DOM, right? If it's, if you've seen API keys that uh, when, when it loads up, you know, you generate an API key and it loads up and it's not hidden. Ideally, you know, it's all, or, or even better, it is hidden, but in the DOM, it's actually still written in there. You know, I, I see that a lot, right? And you've, they've got the thing where you can hide and unhide it, right? If JavaScript can control it, like you can unhide it using JavaScript, you can grab it using JavaScript just by, you know, select uh, by ID or whatever. And then you can send it in a request and you can control, you can go in authorization header equals that. And so all this might happen on the back end again without the user ever even knowing it uh, because that information is available in the DOM or available somewhere uh, where it can access it and then just leverage it as part of the uh, the existing session. Um, I mentioned before, can you get them to disable two-factor authentication? That can be a, a big thing. Not only can that be a big thing to target the users, but it can also be a compliance concern. You know, if, if, uh, if everybody, you know, if there's some type of compliance requirement with their application where the two-factor authentication is important for certain users and you can show a way to disable it, you know, what if you disabled all those right before an audit. I mean, that's, or for the customer, right? If it's an accounting software and the customer, you know, they need to have that as part of their audit. That's an even better way to, to show impact there. Um, yeah, or or what if they're an admin and I can, they have the ability to send these, these uh, invites with a higher privilege. So I invite myself without them knowing. I go there and I, it, it's a post request that does and a post request goes to an endpoint. It sends an invite at the admin level to an email and I send my email and it goes and boom, now I'm in there. I'm not on their session anymore, but I've escalated my privileges and I now have the ability to act as an admin. I can go do a lot of other things. So um, yeah, you are leveraging their existing session, making HTTP requests to the application. You're not going outside of it, but to the application, you're leveraging existing functionality, but you're making these calls using their session that uh, that they obviously did not intend to do. Uh, and then, yeah, data exfiltration. I mean, anything that could be sensitive that you can access with JavaScript, if the content security policy allows, or, or not, right, because there's some other ways to get around that, you can exfiltrate that data. So ideally, the content security policy allows you to send HTTP requests outside of the application, and that's what you're going to do, right? You'll go and load it up in like a get parameter or something, and then you'll send it off and you'll be able to get access to it. And I mentioned before, right, could be an image beacon, right? You can get the full HTML. You can grab the keystrokes that they're doing. You can get access to what their keyboard has. That's super interesting because that may go outside of the scope of the individual application, um, whatever it is, right? But you, you exfiltrate it out. And if you can't get those calls going out, can you leverage the functionality of the application in order to exfiltrate it? You know, so is there uh, somewhere where you can post a comment? And, uh, you know, and that's essentially, so you do a session writing attack on top of that, you grab the data and then you go post a comment. This person posts a comment with their API key or their password or, or something like that with it. Or, um, yeah, can you either get it out there or leverage some type of existing functionality to write it within the application and then you go in there and get it either manually or that's what you got a whole script to do it right and that's that's where you start getting into those OSWE type of things where you you get the victim to execute the session writing attack and then they write their API key to a comment and then your script next goes in and grabs it from that automatically and goes and makes the calls and then it deletes it afterwards using the existing session to kind of cover it up, right? Things can get very, very convoluted here with these attacks. But yeah, I mean, fundamentally, if you can't steal the active session, if you can't leverage the active session to do anything that's, that's you know, gonna take over their account or anything, try to find some really good sensitive data because fundamentally, Every report that you do, for the most part, is going to be tied back into how you're affecting customer data. That's what companies care about more than anything else. If you watch some of my other videos, like especially with Starbucks, I've said Starbucks doesn't care if you can get a free cup of coffee. 
Starbucks has plenty of money. If you go in there and say, oh, I can get free, one free cup of coffee every day, that has no impact to them at all. They make plenty of money. They got no problem giving away a cup of coffee. That's not gonna, that's not gonna really get them riled up. But if you can show them how you can access their customer's you know, bank account, I don't know why they have bank account, but you know, some type of really sensitive information and how you're going to affect their customers and how that's gonna end up on the news and affect their reputation and possibly have legal consequences and do something like that in a ton of overhead. Now, all of a sudden, you've gone from a $5 cup of coffee a day to you're talking millions, tens of millions of dollars in impact. So always, always, always tie it back to sensitive customer data. All right, so talked about this a lot. Just want to kind of reiterate again. Once you have found a, a client side injection, stop before you do anything else and understand, decide exactly how you're going to deliver that to a victim. If your cross-site scripting, if your client side injection is coming from a post request, that you are sending, how are you going to get the victim to execute that? Think about it for a minute. It's a post request. You, if, you, if you can't, if, if it's included in a, in a header, right? Your payload's included in a header uh, or something like that. How, it's gonna be so much more difficult to deliver to your victim. If It may be impossible. You know, a lot of times when you get a, a client-side injection or cross-site scripting through a post request, that does ultimately become a self-cross-site scripting because you have to force somebody to submit that post request in some way. Now, there's, you know, there's some other cases like that, especially with cookies, like if you can poison their cookies, then, then potentially you do it. But there's usually, it usually needs to become a chain uh, and have multiple vulnerabilities before you can you can actually weaponize that. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll do a ton of different demonstrations when I'm actually going through the hunting here, but just understand, I mean, just really, you gotta internalize this and we'll keep saying this over and over again. Get the client side injection to execute, figure out how you're gonna deliver it to the victim and it has to be a very clear, you know, it's the payload is in this get parameter in this link and I send it to them in a phishing, you know, type of thing, or I get it to click it there, or I redirect them from my own malicious website, you know, whatever it is, you have to be able to clearly articulate how you're delivering your client side injection to a victim. Full stop. If you're talking about a cross site scripting and you can't explain how you're going to deliver it to a victim, you're not going to be able to show impact. That part has to be part of your report. Full stop. Okay. So, Ma, ma. Ah. All right. That's good. Something like this. Hey, everyone. 